Moving right along from our looping structure, let's take a look at our decision structures. We have a couple that we're going to focus on. We have an if, we have an else if, and then we have a switch statement. Let's look at the if statement first. And in here, what we're doing is we're creating a Boolean variable called result, and we're setting it equal to true. Now, the thing that's interesting about Boolean variables is that C Sharp automatically knows that it's a Boolean type. So when I choose equals and I start to type, C Sharp knows that I'm looking for a Boolean type. And you can see that it highlights it in blue. So it knows that it's a keyword as well. So our if structure, as we take a look at it, is starts off with the keyword if, and we're checking for what result says in here. So we're checking for a value. We're, we're doing a conditional check on something in the parentheses. If it's true, it will execute the code that is within the curly braces. And in our case, we've also added an else clause to this if statement, which says if result was false, then I want you to execute what's in here. So that we can see how simple that if statement can be, all I actually have to do is simply write if result and put this statement here. And what will happen is if result is true, this line will execute. And then the code will continue execution if there was other lines of code following it. The problem with this syntax is it becomes very difficult to read. And if I had multiple lines of code, you might be thinking which would run, which wouldn't run. So as an example, if I had this line of code here directly underneath, then some might think that both lines of code would execute or would run. But if I do control F5, hmm, they did run, but that's not what I expected. That's not what I was looking for. Why is that? And the reason being is because C Sharp simply looks at the if statement and it says, whatever the result, I execute that first line of code after it. And then I continue executing the code regardless. So it considers the if statement finished right here. To avoid any confusion, you should always put items within your curly braces. So let's go ahead and delete that line of code because that doesn't belong there. And let's uncomment our else clause so that we can see how things will function now. What happens? Control F5, only one statement prints. The result was true. If I change this to false and execute the code, my else clause was executed because the condition was false. All right, so that's the whole purpose behind the if and the else. This doesn't have to be a Boolean variable that we've declared in here. We can simply put other values in to say if 1 equals 1, as an example. And if we execute that, the result was true. Well, why was the result true? Well, because the condition in here evaluated to true. 1 is equal to 1. You might look at this double equal sign and wonder, why did I do that rather than this? And the reason being is because a single equal sign is an assignment operator. You'll notice that C Sharp is complaining with a red squiggly that says the left-hand side of an assignment must be a variable property or indexer. So it thinks we're trying to assign one to one, which doesn't work. So the comparison operator to check equality is the double equal sign. So that is a simple if else statement. We also have an if else if statement down here. Let's go ahead and uncomment this code and see what we're doing. We have an integer variable called value and we've assigned the value of zero. In our if statement, we're going to check to see if value is equal to zero, and of course right now we know it is because we just did the assignment, we'll output this. But we'll check to see, well, what if value is equal to one? Then we'll output this. If it's not equal to zero or one, we'll output this line. Executing the code statement, value is zero, is what we expected because we did set value to zero this evaluated to true, this line of code executed, and C Sharp skipped all the remaining lines of code. If we were to change this to a one and execute the code, value is not zero. So in other words, we executed this line of code because of the else if. This condition evaluated to true. This evaluated to false, we skipped this line of code, we checked here, we evaluated to true, we executed this line. If we set this to 2, we should get our else clause executing where it says value is something else. So that's how you can manipulate your if and else if and else clauses.